And so with that, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here in the last week of our series, Worst Case Scenario. We've learned a lot here. And so today we're gonna answer the question of what do you do when your worst case scenario is behind you? Because you have to realize that worst case scenarios are just a part of life, right? Unfortunately. Look at, write this down in your notes. This world is full of worst case scenarios, right? I mean, what happens is problems tend to cause us to make us feel like we're the only ones that have problems. Anybody else like that? Right, you feel like you're the only one and that you think, oh, there is no one else who would understand. And so what you tend to do is you isolate yourself, which drives us deeper into our troubles, and then we start finding uglier, deeper, and darker coping methods. And so you have to remember, though you might feel alone, you are not alone. Look at a person next to you and say, you are not alone. And say, neither am I. Well, how do we know that we're not alone? Look what Jesus said in John 16. Read this out loud with me, loud and proud. Ready? I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world, Jesus says. Now, like I told you last time I spoke, that this world is not our home, right? It's not. And so on this side of heaven, there's gonna be sin and there's gonna be evil in this world that we'll have to deal with. It will cause temptation. It will cause hurt, pain, and suffering. And in fact, sometimes you and I cause that pain, hurt, and suffering to one another and even ourselves. And so what's that do? Then that leads to guilt, it leads to shame. It makes our hearts hard, our others' hearts hard, which hinders our relationships. And we feel like we're too tired to get involved and help others, or we just don't wanna let others get involved with us when we need aid. And so what God does in all of this is in trials and life happens, God gets us through it. How? I'm glad you asked. Through the Bible, through the Holy Spirit, and almost always God will use others to get you through your worst case scenarios. And if you begin to think about things you've gone through, you'll say, wow, I remember so-and-so was there and this person, and God may not always place a person there, but a lot of times he will, especially if you're walking with him in it. And so we look in the story of Ziklag that we've been studying these last few weeks, and we saw that David and his men were not alone. Why? Because each of them had their wives, their kids, and their stuff stolen. So they didn't do it alone, they came together and they won together. I'm sure the women and the kids Band, banded together to at least comfort or help each other when they were there, I'm sure of, as much as they could have. But they were not alone. They understood each other, and so therefore they helped each other. God was there with them, and he's here with us today. But please do not miss the fact that God has given us one another as well. And even furthermore, you gotta get this one. We are not just to help each other but we are to reach the world that's in need outside of these four walls, amen? See, what hope does the world rely upon? There is no hope. The world doesn't even realize that help and hope are even available. That's why the hurt in the world perpetuates itself, and that's why it's so destructive, because they see no end, and technically there isn't, so to speak, for them. This world doesn't realize that the help and the hope that we have in Christ, so we are the ones that we need to give Jesus Christ as the help and the hope for the people in this world, amen? We are the ones. We can't just expect for them to help and find it. And so what do you do? If this world is full of worst case scenarios, what are we to do? Write this down in your notes. Be Christ's first aid for the worst case scenario of others. Would you read that out loud with me together? Be Christ's first aid for the worst case scenario of others. So we've taken all these many steps in this series, and now today we take the last step of worst case scenarios, and it is this. Your last step in a worst case scenario is to help others when you're done with your worst case scenario, or even while you're in it, you can help others. But you have to get to that point at some point in time. Because when when someone gets a cut, or a bump, or a bruise, what's the first thing that you apply? Okay, that's a tech, that, a band-aid, but what is band-aid considered? First, aid. aid. Somebody last per- service said pressure. I'm like, man, that's a pretty, that's a gash, right? <laughs> so whatever you first apply is first aid, and that's what we need to be, but understand this. This is what you gotta get. This is what Jesus did. He did it spiritually on earth when he died for us, but physically he touched people. He healed their wounds, he healed their lives. And he left this same work for us to continue on. Look at Mark chapter two, verse 17. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy that need a doctor, but who? 
Chuck, <laughs> the sick, right? I'm sick, right? I have not come to call the righteous, but who? Sinners. You might as well just said Chuck again, right? You are, look at me. You are not called to be first aid because Jesus healed a boo-boo. You are called to be first aid because you are cured. You are raised from the dead. We are the result of his work, amen? Yay, yeah. hey, that tomb is open and you are alive today, amen? Yeah. Come on, praise his name. Say, thank you, Jesus. And that's what it's about. And that's, we, we give because we live. We give because we live. Why wouldn't we if we just realize what's been given to us? So I wanna ask you, what have you done with your salvation? Have you put it up on a mantle like a trophy? Have you seen my salvation? <laughs> or have you made it into a medallion around your neck? Look at this. <laughs> I got one, do you? Or you put it in a frame on your wall and say, yep, yeah, that's my uh, salvation there, right? Because salvation is not meant to be put on a wall, but rather be shared with all. God's word tells us, get this, that we, not just some other church in the Philippines, not some other church in the valley, not some other Christians, but we as a whole, our church along with the rest of the body of Christ, we are, say we are, we are. the body of Christ. That's what we are. Now listen, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about this, that literally, we are his hands and his feet, so to speak, to do his work here on earth. We continue what he started. So we, we're his first aid. We're God's ambulance. We're God's first aid box on earth. I want you to read with me Matthew chapter 10, verse eight. Read this out loud with me, please. Jesus said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, louder, drive out demons, freely you've received, so freely give. Now as a pastor, people ask me all the time when I read that scripture, or they read it themselves in their devotion, and they go, pastor. And I go, yeah. And they go, why don't we see this stuff happening anymore? And I say, because you're not doing it. James 4.2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. We are not asking for the healing. We're not asking for the cleansing. We're not asking for the power of God to move to cast out the demons. We're not asking that in our lives and in the lives of others. It's kind of like this. If you have in your house a box of crayons, you're like, I love crayons. It's great. And then you got some, some pictures to color. Like, yeah. And people say, why don't we have color pictures in our house? Because you're not coloring. And so we've stopped coloring spiritually. We have the crayons, and the world's just waiting for us to color the, the colors of God, so to speak, spiritually in this world. And it's, is it any wonder that, you know, when, when people look at our world today, and they even look at the church, is it any wonder our world is lacking color spiritually? Is it any wonder that our families are lacking color spiritually? Or how about the church? It's lacking color spiritually. Or the men of God, they're lacking color spiritually because we're not asking. The women of God are, are lacking color spiritually and the children because we're not incorporating and asking big and believing great for God to do these things that he's already given us the ability to do. We got the crayons and we got the, 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 the paper. We just need to choose to start coloring and believe that God will do great things. And I want you to understand, our world needs us to be this. And so today we're gonna look at this a bit, why we stop coloring, and see about how to start doing it. But I want you to get this before I go into that, John 14, 12, and it's one of my favorite scriptures. Listen to what Jesus actually said. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. So is he gonna lie? No, he said, I'm telling you the truth right now. Anyone who has faith in me, how many guys have faith? Raise your hand. Keep your hand up, ready? Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing he will do even greater things than these. Did you hear what Jesus said to you? Some people say, that's just a disciple, some commentaries. Uh-uh, he said anyone. He didn't say, you 12, right? Anyone, anyone who has faith in me will do these things that I've been doing, and he will do even greater things. Man, if that doesn't get your blood pumping, I don't know what does. Come here, praise God. Yeah. Look, at. do you believe that Christ still heals? Yeah. Do you believe that Christ has the power over demons? Yeah. Do you believe that he has power over demonic strongholds? Do you believe he chooses to use us? Yes. Then let's start doing it. Yes. Amen? Why don't we give first aid? That's a question that came to mind preparing the sermon. Before I just tell you what to do and how to do it, let's look at why. Let's try and eliminate the things that are stopping us because we, we gotta take care of that stuff, right? And so why have we stopped coloring spiritually? I'm gonna give you these and they're pretty fast and I'm gonna give them to you because they speak for themselves. 
But what I want you to do is I want you to go through these with the Holy Spirit over the next few days and hey, are any of these present in me and let's work on it, Lord. You know, you confess it and you just begin to recognize it, amen? So the first one that I usually recognize why we won't be first aid or why we won't color spiritually is A is selfishness. Say selfishness. You know the rule there, seek first the kingdom of me, right? It's my favorite course, seek ye first the kingdom of me, right? Okay? So that's just in our wiring. But what God reminds me time and time again to encourage me to keep these balances, he says, son, when you are self-led, that's when your spirit is dead. When you're self-led, your spirit is dead because there's no movement, there's no action. And I'm like, why don't I feel God? Why don't I sense God? God goes, put me first and you'll see great things happen. B is fear. Fear stops us a lot of times, doesn't it? We think our faith gets weak because we focus on our problems instead of Jesus. We're too afraid to give because we think, I don't have enough. And the problem is, is fear leads to a lot of other things in life. Fear leads to many other things, doesn't it? I mean, it can. Think about it. Fear stops you from taking advantage of opportunities that are set before you. And you get angry because you realize you either missed out or you messed up. That's why you get angry. Another reason why we don't give first aid, C, is busyness. Say busyness. busyness. Because of selfishness, because of fear, and then busyness. We are so distracted that we don't even see the first aid needs around us in the world. And so you could either be busy doing stuff or be busy doing the right stuff. But I wanna tell you, whichever one you choose determines the impact your life will make. Because if you're too busy to care, then you're just too busy. What if Jesus told people, hey, you need some help? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just too busy for you right now. I mean, can you imagine that? And what you need to do with busyness is you have to leave enough space in your life so you can be Jesus with skin on. And how do you know? How do you know if, if you got that space? Because you're spirit-led instead of self-led. And I'm gonna tell you, being first aid, it requires intentionality, it will, you'll be inconvenienced, and you gotta let the Holy Spirit interrupt you. It's like that story that all of us are familiar with in Luke chapter 10 that Jesus tells called the Good Samaritan. We all know that story, right? Here in this story, Jesus tells this story about this, um, this guy, right? And he basically gets jumped and he gets left for dead. And what happens, an actual priest in the story walks by and he goes, ew, and walks away, right? And then a temple assistant comes by and he goes, and he walks away. Just, they don't want anything to do with it. And then just a normal average guy comes by and he goes, and he goes over to him. He bandages his wounds. He picks him up, puts him on his donkey. Don't read the King James Version. Puts him on his donkey. And then, <laughs> and then he brings him to an inn, right? And then he says, take this care of this guy, make sure he's okay, and if you need more money when I get back, I'll foot the bill. That's what he does, and that's what our world needs. But sadly, our world hasn't got that story that Jesus told 2,000 years ago. We're still struggling to do the right thing. And I want you to watch this video on something that actually happened recently. Watch this. A good Samaritan who died trying to help a woman didn't get the same help from New Yorkers. As shocking video obtained by the Post shows the homeless man lying in a pool of blood for over an hour after being stabbed when he came to the aid of a woman who was being robbed. The stunning footage shows people strolling by 31-year-old Hugo Alfredo Tail Yaks early last Sunday morning where he was lying dead on 144th Street in Jamaica, Queens. The surveillance video shows multiple people over the course of more than one hour walking by the homeless man without calling for help. In one incident, a man comes out of a nearby building and takes a cell phone picture of the dead man before leaving. Moments later, another walker stops, leans over, and begins vigorously shaking the body before walking away. After more than one hour and 20 minutes, firefighters finally arrive at the scene and roll tail yaks over, revealing a large pool of blood. That actually happens more often than you would think, and they actually gave it a term called the bystander effect. And they said there's this hidden rule in the bystander effect, and it's actually don't get involved. I wanna tell you something. God did not create us, save us, or call us to live out the bystander effect. But rather, we are saved, called, and sent out to be his first aid. Let's stop being bystanders, and let's start being first aid again. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew chapter five, yeah, praise his name for that. In Matthew chapter five, Jesus said this, you are the light of the world. 
a city on top of a hill, a, a, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Okay, great. Let your light shine before all men. Why, Jesus? Because that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. As we do what he would do and as he wants us to do it, that's when they see, oh, they might be doing this for a greater reason than themselves. When we do it first, that's what testifies about the living God. Amen? We have to let the light shine. How can, how can we call ourselves followers of the living God, of the one that left heaven to come and suffer and die for us, but yet we pass others by in their worst case scenarios? I mean, think about the people that God placed in your life and the worst case scenarios that you've gone through. Now be that unto them. Matthew 22 says this, love your neighbor as yourself. When we see others hurting, let's love them as ourself, amen? amen. The last one, D, is pride. What happens, we get caught up in a social status. Romans 12, three says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Now we live in Silicon Valley. I was born and raised here, okay? A lot of us are educated, right? And uh, we got good jobs. We're all living to make more money, but I wanna tell you something. Because it's, it's, it's best to be made right so you can become better. And I want to give you some good advice here today. You are n you, it, it's not your education, your paycheck, or your job that makes you better than others. It's your heart. Amen. Praise him for that. In fact, if that's how you measure importance, then you probably actually look down on Jesus Christ because Jesus left heaven, was born in a barn, wrapped in rags, didn't go to school that much really, and he washed feet. Jesus said the greatness is measured by servanthood. Amen? So if you want to be great, wash people's feet. I want to tell you, this is no more better measured inside of you than that church is actually because we all know how churches function. Everybody has a part to play. Everyone has a role to play. And so one of the great things is you get an opportunity to serve in ministry. And if you don't serve, then you gotta check your heart and see what's going on. And I wanna tell you is that at a church like this, it's so easy to serve because there's multiple services, which means there's multiple eating times, which means you'll never miss out on a meal if you serve. Praise God, right? So you tell somebody, all right, man, I'll work the PowerPoint for you while you go to church, and then when I go to church, you work the PowerPoint for me. Deal, deal. Hey, I'll watch your kids while you go to church, and you can watch my kids when I go to church. They go, I've seen your kids. Forget it. No, I'm just teasing. Anyway, <laughs> right? And on and on. Hey, I'll watch the parking lot or put out the signs for you if you do that for me. And that's what it is in its own way or another. So I want to encourage you with something. Get involved. Just do what you're either good at or what you love and passionate to do for Jesus. Just find something and do it. It makes a huge difference. It makes an incredible difference. And, I, and, and we gotta get that because when we really begin to live in that and we, we, we activate that within our lives, together as a whole, we do so much more. It makes such a huge difference. And so as we see this, you know, if, 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 you, uh, if you can't stand kids, then pass out bulletins. If you're shy, get on the sound team. If computers scare you and freak you out, work with the youth. If adults bore you, then work with kids. If you don't know what to do, man, put out the signs. Direct the traffic. Be part of the security. But when you, stop, when you start putting yourself above others, that's when you stop being like Christ. Guys, he washed the disciples' feet. He let his creation beat him and slaughter him. Are you really so important that you can't help someone, love someone, you can't feed them, serve them, and you're so important you can't hand on a bulletin, direct traffic, put out signs, teach our kids, work with the youth? Just imagine, get this, imagine what would happen if everyone at, at Family Community Church started serving in the ministry. You know what would happen? We'd have to sell this place to go into a better place because we couldn't keep people out of here. Now, wouldn't that be a good problem? We fill up the buildings quicker than we could pay them off. Amen? Amen? That's what the world sees. I would love to see us do that. Praise God. So here's what you do. You got to give what you got. Say, give what you got. That's how you do it. Write that down in your notes. How can you be first aid? You got to give what you what? What you what? Give what you what? Amen. Praise God. Give what you got. It's so easy. You don't got to be rich. You just gotta be willing. And so over the next few minutes, I'm gonna really quickly give you some things, nine things, and once again, these speak for themselves. So I'm gonna go through them kind of quick just to give you some things to reference and choose what you're gonna do. And then you get with the Holy Spirit and right now, and, and you, what I want you to do is maybe begin to write them down. Write, write on here, this is the band-aid, the first aid I'm gonna be. 
in this world, at this church. And also write a name of somebody that you're gonna invite to Friend Day, renovate next week. So write a name of people you're gonna work on and invite, a neighbor, somebody you're gonna be praying for, and then write out, here's where I'm gonna get involved. Here's where I wanna start doing something. And these, like I said, um, I'm gonna give them to you somewhat fast, so just write them down as God speaks to you. Now, first of all, give what you got. What's that mean? In Acts chapter three, there's a story about John and Peter, they're heading to the temple and there's this guy that's crippled and he begs for money every day and Peter looks at him and says, hey man, silver and gold I don't have but what I do have I give you in Jesus' name. And he gives him Jesus, he, and the guy gets healed and that's all that you need. You don't have to be rich, you just have to be willing. You give what you what? Now, look, do you think if Peter and John would have had some silver and gold they would have gave him some? Yeah, probably, and he still would have prayed for him but how many guys think that that guy that was crippled was glad that they were poor financially but yet rich spiritually that day? Amen? They gave what they had. They gave what, what was available to them. And so I want to give you these pretty quickly. Is um, A, here's what first aid you can be in your notes, okay, as you give what you got. The first one here is a pretty simple one that most people ask for is money. Say money. Money, money, money. Sorry? So you can give money to people. People ask for money all the time. Now I gave you a good amount of scripture there with this, and, and don't give them monopoly money, okay? Give them <laughs> But I gave you a bunch of scripture there, and, and the reason why is because scripture balances out, because a lot of people think when they become Christians, if anybody asks for money, you always have to give it to people. But 2 Thessalonians 3 says this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. So what I mean by this real quickly is, does God put the grains of food inside of the colonies for the ants? No, they gotta go get it. Did God put the manna for the Israelites in their tents? No, they had to go get it. Does God put the worms in the nest for the birdies? No, they gotta go get it. And so the point is, some people in life just don't wanna go gather. And they want you to give to them what, they've, what you've gathered. And so when people ask for money, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you've been gathering? No, some people, they can't. And if they can't, then we do all that we can to help them. But if they can, sometimes you give them grace, and you go, okay. Sometimes you go, hey, you know what? Why don't you maybe get a job first or start looking for a job and, and, and go from there, see what God would do with your life, okay? But I found that sometimes God will send people to us to direct them, to sometimes you know, help them. And sometimes we, and when we give them when they don't deserve it, we give them, we're giving them grace and mercy, and that teaches us a lot about what God's given us. So you gotta, you gotta uh, you know, be discerning, and you gotta see if it's legitimate or not, if they could take care of it themselves, and you go on from there. Sound good? Just wanted to clear that up for you, because that one could get very confusing. I love what Rick Warren says. He says, we're not responsible for people, but to people. Amen? Here's another thing that we give to people in life. Serving, which means we give a hand. <laughs> yes, we give a hand. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We give a hand. We help people. Here's something else you can give somebody. You can give them in life. You can give them your time. Just give people time. Spend time with people. How many of you guys are so glad that when somebody has spent a little time with you before? Amen? I mean, that, that helps out a lot. How about this one? I love this one. You can... You can uh, Give somebody, you, you can listen to them. You can be ears. Oh. Or an ear, you know, take or give, whatever you got. Just give them whatever you got, right? You can be an ear. How many guys are glad when somebody has listened to you before? That, may, that means, you know, those people that don't just talk, they actually listen. Here's another one, friendship. How many guys know our world needs more friends, right? Here's the difference with a friend. When it's a true friend, you'll write down the appointment. So you guys need to start writing some time down specifically for key people in your life. To be there for them and then to be here, be there for you. That's when it means the difference. Here's something else you can give, love. When's the last time you just loved somebody? You said, hey, I love you, God loves you. I'm there for you. Just give love to people. Here's another one, invite. You can invite somebody. How about that, right? Did you know these aren't just chair decorations? Yeah. They're like big postcards. Here you go, check, got a map and everything. Invite somebody, amen? That's great. And uh, here's something else. You can give somebody life. When you give somebody Jesus, you give them life. You could just be in a conversation with somebody and just say, hey, have you ever given your life to Jesus Christ before? Is that something you're still thinking about? Would you like me to pray with you? That's the greatest way to start that conversation especially if you had a gas station pumping gas. But here's the other one, is you could be care and compassion. Be that first aid. Now hang on to these, because I'm gonna give you something to do with these at the very end today. But be a Band-Aid in someone's life. 
care, and compassion. I want you to write this last thing down. Here's why I'm saying all of this today. The world is not changed as we go to church, but as we be the church. Amen? This world will not change as we just go to church. It's time for us to start being the church. Amen? We gotta stop leaving people when life hits them, when life whacks them. We gotta start doing all that God wants us to be because the local church is the hope of the world. And we got to give what we what? Give what you what? So Pastor Todd and the worship team is gonna come out here right now and here's what we're gonna do. I've been having you spend the last few minutes write down what you got to give. Is it your time? Is it your friendship? Is it love? Whatever it is, start picking something. What ministry are you gonna get involved in? You're gonna work with the kids. You're gonna work with the youth. What are you gonna do? And I want you to write it down and then I want you to do this. You're gonna write down what you're gonna do and then what people are you gonna invite. And when they play this song, this song is called Giving Everything to God. And you, know, you wanna know why you can give everything to God? because he's given everything to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes him shall not perish but have eternal life. We can't outgive our God, amen? You can give everything to who? And you can give everything that you? Because God's given everything to who? Give what you what? So I want you to stand up, and right when this song is being played, I want you to fill this out, and I want you to fill up these first aid boxes of God, and let's be God's first aid in this world, amen? Right on the plate, come and put it in. Praise God. God, I'm giving everything to God. Giving everything to God. Giving everything to me. I'm giving everything to God. Giving everything to God. Giving everything to God. He's giving everything to me. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, hallelujah. Woo! We're gonna give you some more time to do it up, but here's what I want you to do. What do you do with these little Band-Aids? You take it, you peel off the back, and you put it in your Bible. And every time you open up your Bible on the inside flap, you'll remind yourself, I am God's first aid in this world, amen? And all I gotta do is give what I what? Give what you what? Give what you what? Praise God, is God good today? Amen, go give what you got. God bless you.